Welcome back. What we're going to do here is make some sole gel materials with this triethoxy methyl silane. It's got three ethoxy groups on it and one methyl group. The ethoxy groups are going to fall off, making ethanol, and the methyl group will stay on there. The ethoxy groups will then, or what was left, will then cross link to form something like silica. So what I'm then going to do is add some ethanol to this. I've added about five milliliters of the silane. Then I'm going to add some, about the same of ethanol. It's a little bit out of focus, sorry. And then we will add some acid. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So here at a higher speed to make it less boring, I'm going to add some ethanol to this. That's the solvent. And then finally, we're going to add, or I am going to add, some acid. It's going to be um, hydrochloric acid, because the good thing about hydrochloric acid is it can evaporate both the acid and the water. That's coming along about now. It's just a little bit. Um, the volume of acid and water needed is just a tiny amount, because the water is effectively a catalyst. We get back the oxygens. Now what it needs to do is hydrolyze for a little while. So first of all, it's mixing. You can see it's gone white. That's because the uh, silane doesn't mix very well with water. It's gone slightly white. The reaction has, however, proceeded a little bit. Otherwise, it wouldn't mix at all. Typically, this doesn't mix in the slightest. So it's already reacted to form the silanol, which is more hydrophilic than the starting compound. And now I'm going to leave it for an hour. Time, time, time. Okay, an hour has passed, and you can see that nothing has happened, or nothing obvious has happened. That's because the um, silane has hydrolyzed, but it hasn't cross-linked very much, because the acid reaction doesn't cause it to grow very long parts of polymer. <coughs> so what we're then going to do is add some base to this. We're going to add some ammonia for exactly the same reason that we added hydrochloric acid. Ammonia can also evaporate. When we mix the ammonia in, it starts to form chains, and it does start to fall out a little bit, so you can see it's whiter than it was before. But there are some bubbles in there because I mixed it. This is also going to take some time. I will uh, show you some of that, but it's quite boring. It, uh, I tried to film it, but nothing had happened in an hour. So I left it overnight, and it eventually went hard. Here it's cross-linking and forming a solid. We can't really see anything because it's happening fairly slowly and uh, is not very visu visual. What will be happening eventually is it will form a solid and phase separate from the solution. So we'll end up with a solid mass, which we will see later. I didn't manage to catch it on camera because it takes a long time and then it suddenly appears to be finished. It happened overnight, unfortunately, so we don't see it. You will see um, in the next cut that we'll come to the next day and have a look at it when it's formed a pretty much a coin of solid material at the bottom of the container. And here we are the next day. You can see that it looks pretty much the same, but when I start to fiddle with it, some solid falls off that was the liquid that was stuck to the sides of the beaker and have just now dried into a solid glass-like substance. The piece in the middle has now shrunk and there's some weird liquid in there. That's because the pores, or as the solid forms, it forms this porous solid that then shrinks under its own surface tension because the solid is forming bonds and getting smaller and smaller and harder and harder. And that squeezes out some liquid, which I'm pouring out now. After a while, this dried up and left some salt in the bottom. You can see the little solid pellet there, which is our sole gel material full of solvent, <coughs> which is then a mixture of water and ethanol mostly. As you can see, I'm trying to show you anyway, it's much smaller than the bottom of the container, the mold that it was in, because it's shrunk. And that's from this 
squeezing effect. So there it is. It's quite thick, it's reasonably hard, it's reasonably stable. This particular one has only about 50% pores, so it's, it's comparatively hard. You can make them with more pore volume if you want. I'm going to take this piece that I've cut off and dry that for demonstration purposes to show you that the tension inside it will cause it to crack. So here is the bit that we're going to play with. I'm actually going to cut it in half, but I forgot to do that on camera. Here it is in half, and the first thing I'm going to do is set it on fire, which is obviously a very brutal way of drying it. It's on fire right now, um, and that's drawing the ethanol out. And you can see the surface is drying very quickly. Because it dries faster than the inside, the surface shrinks, and so it cracks and crazes, which is part of the problem that we have here. Those parts dropping off are obviously chipping off the block. So that's not a very good way of drying it. Let us try another way, which is just to leave this piece here in the open. I'm now going to do a time lapse, which it took about two hours. So this is going to now dry for two hours, and we will see it gradually get smaller and smaller and eventually break into pieces. What's going on now is that the surface tension of the liquid, of the liquid ethanol and water, is squeezing our material and making it smaller and smaller, and eventually it generates enough stress inside the material. You can see it's shrinking now. It generates enough stress inside the material that it cracks. So we can see that it's developed a crack, <coughs> and another one will form from the bottom and join it. It's getting quite small. As I said, this takes about or took about two hours in reality. If we want to dry this properly, as they would do in the optics industry, we would have to dry it very, very slowly, which is why I put the other part back in the container and put the lid on. Enough will leak out through the closed lid so that it will dry very slowly on its own. And that will probably save this one because the pores aren't that small. So now you can see, if I can get it in focus, there's a big crack in there, and it goes pretty much all the way through. I think I turn it around in a moment. There you go. It's cracked almost all the way through from the st internal stress generated by the liquid evaporating. <coughs> the pores in this are probably um, large numbers of nanometers, probably a few hundred nanometers in size, which is why it looks fairly transparent. This is the bit that I set on fire, and you can see that the inside hasn't shrunk at all. It's still wet.